Good afternoon, Year 3. Today, for science, we're going to be looking at what are the uses of materials. Materials can be used to make many different things. Sometimes the same material can have different properties. For example, a plastic bag can be transparent or opaque, but the question is, are either of these important, the most important thing for a plastic bag to have, the transparency or opaqueness? So what we need to know is how to choose the most suitable materials and their properties to make objects and things. And if objects are made of unsuitable materials, they might not work properly. Knowing the materials properties helps us make the correct choices. Here I have some information about different materials. Metals are usually found in rocks. As Jada said, when she goes on Minecraft, she finds them in the mines and the caves. So they're found in rocks and what they do is they take the metal out of the rock, they extract it to make it a pure metal. Metals are all waterproof, which is really, really helpful if this is one of the properties that you need for your product. They're usually shiny. Some of them are not, as we know iron is not shiny. Now metals can be made into thick sheets. Now the thick sheets are strong and hard. If this is a property that you need for your product, the strong and hard part, then the metal can be made into a thick sheet. But it can also be made thin and flexible, also quite lightweight, as we know from the aluminium cans. Those are very, very thin and also flexible. Flexible is not the most important property for the aluminium can, but the thinness and the waterproofness is very important when we're using it. the cans for drinks. As we know, metals can also be pulled into a wire. Now, when we use wires for conducting electricity, as we know, and Abraham pointed out to us previously, copper is a really good conductivity of electricity. So we can use the wires in electric circuits. We can also use wires to hold things together. And so this is also a really good thing about metals. It's very versatile. Another thing that metals can be is magnetic, such as iron and steel. And the reason I, steel is magnetic is because it contains iron. There's a couple of other magnetic metals that we didn't study yet, but you will study soon. Rubber is natural. It comes from tree sap. One of the main properties that we like about rubber is that it's waterproof and it is flexible. Now, usually rubber is soft and not strong unless we make it thicker or we mix it with other materials to make it harder and stronger. <coughs> so if we have natural rubber coming from the tree sap, it's actually quite easy to break. But then when we make a thick rubber sole, it's quite hard to break because we have made it stronger. We've mixed it with other materials, made it harder and stronger. The next one we studied was ceramics. Ceramics are made from natural things like clay. Clay is actually quite fun to play with, I think. It gets all over your hands when it's wet and sticky. And it also comes from the ground. Clay comes from the ground. Now, ceramics are inflexible and rigid. Rigid means like hard, similar to hard, but it doesn't move, inflexible and rigid. So we cannot manipulate it and move it around and wiggle it. The good thing about ceramics is they are hard and strong. So if we're using the ceramics in our bathroom, it's really important for it to be hard and strong because we use it all the time. Another good thing about ceramics is Things like cups, we can use them in mugs for hot tea and hot coffee. And those are also nice and strong because we don't want to spill the hot drinks on us. The next thing we studied was wood. Wood comes from trees. Now the wood is absorbent. Wood is absorbent, which means that it takes in water. As we know, trees are living things, so they need to be able to take in water and move the water around. So this is one of the things that what is able to do, one of their properties. But we can put a coating on them to make them waterproof, like a varnish. If we have a look at wooden tables, 
then you will notice that a wooden table, if you spill a glass of water on it, usually the water does not absorb. That is not because of the wood being non-absorbent or waterproof, it's because of the coating. The layer on top makes it waterproof. Now we have a couple of different types of wood. Some types of wood are very hard. Usually it's the deciduous woods, the ones that go to sleep over winter that are harder. Because they grow so slowly over winter time, it actually solidifies and makes the wood harder. And they're usually strong, but some is very, very weak. There's an example called balsa wood. Now balsa wood is used to make model planes. Balsa wood needs to be lightweight so that the model plane will be able to take off without much force. And so balsa wood, while it is a wood still, it is actually very weak and you can just break it with your hands like a toothpick. It's amazing. <clears throat> and another thing is wood is flexible. This, of course, depends on how thick the wood is. We know that wood is flexible and we can bend it easily if it's in a toothpick. But then if it's in a large piece of wood, a slab of wood, like a chair leg, then we cannot bend it so easily. It's not so flexible. So the thickness of the wood and the type of wood depends and determines whether or not the wood is flexible. Now, the next one we had was fabric. Fabric is made by weaving fibers together. We learned in the story of Maui how they weave things together. And, and when we have different fibers like wool or cotton or um, what else is there, we also have un unnatural fibers like nylon and we weave them together to make a sheet of fabric, sheet of fabric. So while it may be natural to begin with, then we weave it together and then fabric itself is actually man-made. Now we have some natural fabrics such as cotton which comes from the plant, we have wool which comes from the hair of an animal and we also have leather which comes from the skin of an animal. All of these are changed. While they're called a natural fabric, it's still a man-made product. Fabric is a man-made product. And fabric can be strong or weak. Some fabric is easier to break and some fabric is harder to break. For example, we studied the tent. The camping tent was very, had very, very strong fabric so that if it was in the rain or the wind, then it wouldn't break when it was outside when people were camping. Again, it can also be waterproof or absorbent. As we know, the tent had to be waterproof and umbrellas are also made of fabric and they're also waterproof. But sometimes we want the fabric to be absorbent, depending on if this is the important property. If the important property is absorbency, such as the dishcloth when we're trying to dry our dishes, then we need to choose a fabric that has an absorbent property. Next we have glass. Now glass is usually man-made by melting sand and other minerals together. Now it is mostly strong, but it can be broken easily. This is a bit of a, a bit of a strange one. It's strong because we usually can't bend it, but then if we drop it, we give a huge amount of force to it, it can break. Now, one of the main properties that people like about glass is that it's waterproof. Also, that is inflexible. Inflexible and rigid. Rigid also means not able to move, quite strong. And one of the main things that we also like about glass is that it can be made to be transparent. Glass isn't always transparent. It depends on how you make it how you melt it and which minerals you put together to make it transparent. Glass can also be colored quite easily using different minerals together. So it's quite nice when you have a stained glass window or something, and then we can make patterns and stuff in our windows, which is also quite lovely. And then the last one is plastic. Plastic is always a man-made material and it's made from chemicals. So we mix different chemicals together to create different types of plastics. Plastic has different properties depending on what you want to do with it. So you choose the property you want and then you use the, the different chemicals to make that specific plastic suitable for different uses. 
It could be strong, it could be weak, it could be flexible, it could be inflexible. So, for example, we have soft, weak and flexible for food wrap. So that type of plastic is able to be molded around the food and it keeps your food fresh because it's able to push out all of the air and cover it completely because it's very, very flexible and soft. But weak is not always the thing that we want to have, but it just happens to be if we want a flexible and soft food wrap, unfortunately, we also have a weak property. Now, another thing that we can think about are the, the wheels on an office chair. Now, the wheels on an office chair get a lot of use. We are rolling around on these chairs all the time, so they always need to be hard and strong. Another thing about plastic is it is waterproof, which is also very, very helpful if you have things like plastic cups, containers, things that are wanting to contain food or liquids. We have a desk made out of wood. Wood is smooth. Now, I want to have hands up who can tell me other properties that make wood good for a desk. What are other properties that make wood good for a desk? Hands up, please. Muhammad, can you please tell me? The desk, it's made out of wood. What is another property? Hard to break. Hard to break, which means it should be strong. Strong, excellent. Thank you. Hello, Judy. My scissors are made of steel. The steel is shiny. Is this important, Judy? Should the scissors be shiny or it doesn't matter? It's not important. Exactly, it's not important. So, please tell me for scissors, what is important for scissors to be? Strong. Strong, very good. Hello, Lily. Hi. Hi. Now, my window is made of glass. The glass is clear or transparent. Can you tell me another property that it's important to have a window glass? I'm strong. Strong, exactly. Because if it wasn't strong, then maybe it would break easily and then we could get cut with the glass, right? Yeah. Okay. And what about another property? Waterproof. Waterproof, exactly, because we don't want the water to come in. Thank you, Lily, that was great. Ziad, can you tell me, the shirt is soft. The shirt is made of cloth fabric. What is another property that's important? Flexible. Flexible, excellent. Hello, Maria. <clears throat> Would you like to answer the one about ceramic mug? Yes. Okay, so... My cup is made of, of ceramic or china, we can call it. China is fragile, which means that we could break it if we drop it. But we have important properties for the mug. What are the important properties? Uh, I guess it has to be hard. Hard, good. So not easy to scratch. And what else should it be? Uh, it has to be waterproof. Exactly. It needs to be hard so we don't scratch it because we're using it a lot. And it needs to be waterproof. Very good, Maria. Thank you. That was perfect. Hi, Lily. Would you like to answer this question? Sure. Thank you. My sweater is made of wool. The wool is warm. Tell me another property that is important about the wool sweater. Flexible. Flexible. Excellent. Thank you. Jada. Hello, Jada. Hello. Hi, sweetie. Jada, this kite is made out of paper. The paper is light. Now, is there, are there any other properties that are important for the kite to have? The paper should be flexible. Flexible, good. Because it needs to catch the wind. So it needs to be moving and able to catch the wind by, by making a little billow. We call it a billow. Are there any other properties that are important? That's it. That's it, exactly. So the only two main properties that we need for the kite is we need it to be lightweight, and we need it to be flexible so that it catches the wind. Okay, let's have a quick look at through some of the examples here. Materials have different properties. Tick the best material to make each item. One has been done for you. Now, the end of a walking stick, we know that should be rubber because it's strong and flexible. Hello, Marian. Now, what material is best for the key? Should it be metal, plastic, or rubber? Metal. Metal, very good, thank you. Okay, let's try Muhammad. Hello, Muhammad. What about the glass lens? What should we use for the glass lens? Should we use metal, plastic, or rubber? 
uh, plastic. Because, yes. because sometimes we can make plastic into a clear thing. So for example, for our sunglasses, they usually have a plastic lens. Not all the time, glass is better, but of those three, metal, plastic, and rubber, for the lens, the plastic is definitely the best answer. Thank you. Question number 26. Miss Vina is conducting a scientific observation to see which paper is the most absorbent. She uses a glass beaker to conduct the experiment. She needs to be able to see the strips of paper clearly. Now there's two things here that we need to circle when we're doing it during an exam. We need to circle the most absorbent because that's important and see the strips of paper clearly. So those two are the most important properties that we need to be able to do. Here's the experiment. We have the strips of material, the beaker and the water. The thing that we're trying to determine is what properties the beaker needs to have. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down the two properties of glass that make it suitable for using in the scientific experiment. We need to choose the words below to complete the sentences. Now, if we go back to the top, we can see that the, we're trying to see which paper is most absorbent, which means that we're going to be using water inside the beaker. We are also needing to see the strips of paper clearly. So which property will hold water and which property will allow us to see the paper clearly, okay? Would you like to answer, Jada? Okay. Okay. Sure. Which two properties of glass make it suitable for using in the scientific experiment? Transparent. So it needs to be transparent. Why does it need to be transparent? So we can see what? Because we can see through it. See through it to see the strips of paper, exactly. And what about the second one? What else needs to make it? It also needs to be waterproof because no water can come in. Yes, exactly, because it needs to hold the water inside the beaker. Very, very good. Thank you. So we need to then write the two things. Glass is waterproof and it is transparent. Thank you, Year 3. That's all for today. We'll see you next time.